Chuck, the issue of time is fundamental to the nature of physics. It, it pervades all of modern physics theory. You've approached time as a cosmologist, a planetary scientist, and also philosophically. What have you learned with your science uh, hat regarding the nature of time? Well, I think what's been learned is that time remains, as, as it has for so long, the deepest mystery in science, in physics anyway. It's that it's a part of everyday life. Without it, we'd be frozen. And we don't really quite understand it. In quantum mechanics, it's a thing called an operator. And how what we would do with that is unclear. In general relativity, it's a, it's a dimension in geometry. And that doesn't correspond either to our experience. So both major descriptions of, of what time is within physics, they're not only inconsistent with each other, they're inconsistent with our powerful experience of being open creatures that have a history and develop. Time seems to be something everybody knows until you try to describe it. Yeah, it's a great problem. But that's what makes science exciting, great problems. It would be boring if they weren't great problems. It would be boring if we understood everything. So time is one of these great mysteries. One of the challenges is to try to figure out what small parts of the problem can be addressed. Mm -hmm. Maybe solving the problem all at once is incredibly hard. Perhaps when somebody comes up with some way really at a deep level to integrate general relativity and quantum mechanics and whatever that integrated structure may be, may transcend both theories in some interesting way. That'll probably give the deepest illuminating insight. Do you see that possibly being a quantized theory of time where at some very fundamental level, smaller than the Planck length, I mean incredibly small, that time space, space time breaks up into discrete parts? I don't really know. Obviously, the, the quantum idea is very deep. Whether it applies to time is a completely open question. Uh, I think we need to learn from reality. That will involve a lot of guesswork by theoretical physicists. And if the experimentalists can come up with some clue, that would be spectacular. Maybe there will be some way to see a quantization of time-like functions. What are the implications of that for our common perceptions of time? Well, I think the, the big stakes are, are external to science. That is, at the moment, it, it, we would seem to think that we are ultimately timeless, that living in time is an, an illusion. You know, Einstein had a friend called Michel Besso, and he died. And he wrote to Michel Besso's widow, and uh, it's not an example of, of um, pastorly compassion. He, he said that she shouldn't be sad because Michelle really wasn't dead, because general relativity showed that human beings are not points of existence. They're world lines in space-time. This four-dimensional existence. And that's sometimes called the block universe. Maybe we live in a block universe, but I'd like to get out of it if that's <laughs> the case. Because it means that the, the drama of our lives, the choices we make, the the passions we experience are somehow already there. And the, the, the future is not now, it's then, but it, it is then in this four-dimensional space. So it is in the future, but still coterminous. It's yeah. existing sort of at the same time, but you can't say time. They're, they're powerful. Uh, obviously, general relativity has been magnif magnificently demonstrated experimentally, and we're all waiting for gravity probe B's data to come in on on some important details about uh, space-time and spinning masses. But often when you ask a general relativist, do you like this block universe view, they, they'll back off and say, well, this is a description of nature. It's a way to describe the relation of objects. But it's not, we're not really talking about what reality is. We're not extinguishing timeful existence. So that's part of the schizophrenia within physics. Of, of trying to understand what general relativity means and whether it's deeply right in the philosophical sense or whether the problem with, with the, the lack of an asymmetry between the past and the future geometrically, whether that's a clue of a paradox that we need to go beyond this description into something more richly interesting. Do we expect that when general relativity and quantum mechanics are unified, that time will be... Uh, will be derived from that, will fall out of that unity? 
So, well, I, I think many people would expect that. I don't know. There are two different directions people tend to take. That A reductionistic one, they say that time will be nothing but something, so it'll kind of vanish. Hmm. And again, you have a, the, the deep reality, the ur-reality, would be some, in some sense static or timeless. It's not a scientific matter, but I'm on the other side of that election. I think that time is, is the deepest aspect of existence. And, and I would expect that a deep new synthesis in physics would make us understand time as the reality that's more there than not there, that we wouldn't say it's nothing but something that isn't time. We might say that the other stuff is in some sense a part of time. So that, that you would see time not as a derived thing, but as a fundamental thing which derives other things like space or matter or energy or yeah. whatever. It's a little bit like life. You know, you, you, have a, you have a dead creature. It's just lifeless matter. But when it's integrated and working together, then it lives. Time is a little bit like that. It's the life of existence. And if physics illuminates the heart of existence, it ought to illuminate time without, in some sense, extinguishing its reality.